More details on Vince McMahon's major spinal surgery, with some describing it as a major life-altering operation. Details on that, plus Rey Mysterio seemingly suffers a concussion last night on SmackDown, forcing his match to be abruptly stopped against Santos Escobar. Details on if it was real, a storyline, and reaction backstage to the incident in question. Roman Reigns and Jey Uso go face-to-face -face last night on SmackDown, ahead of their match for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at SummerSlam. L.A. Knight and Sheamus have been added to a battle royal at the biggest event of the summer. Ronda Rousey has left a Mars reality show and details as to why. Conan believes that WWE should get rid of Bray Wyatt. Plus, the Street Profits debut a new look courtesy of Bobby Lashley. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of World Wrestling Entertainment. Let's start off talking about Vince McMahon, WWE's executive chairman, and details surrounding the story that broke yesterday regarding him undergoing major spinal surgery. Now, it was kept very hush-hush by people very close to Vince McMahon, certainly. And according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fight for Select, they have confirmed with WWE sources that the surgery in question took place last week, which kept him from doing any work on SmackDown or Raw after. Overall, the surgery is said to have been nearly five hours long, and those close to him claim that it was a, quote, major life-altering operation, as it would be for anyone who underwent it. Fightful asked WWE if this would affect his work moving forward, and they were not given a direct answer on that. However, they also learned that Triple H was not at Raw this past Monday, and the show was ran by Bruce Pritchard. However, Triple H is expected back imminently. Several talents that Fightful spoke to said that they had no idea about Vince McMahon's surgery until it was made public via the TMZ report yesterday. So again, still details are very scarce and sketchy regarding this, but seemingly it's um, they've called it a major spinal surgery. Some people are calling it major life-altering operation. Again, he was under the knife for about five hours too, so obviously we wish Vince McMahon the best in his recovery. If we get any more details as to how in any way it's going to be life-altering or anything like that, and his future with WWE, because if it's life-altering, certainly it could affect his future with the company, we'll let you know, but... Let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section below. And what do you think this means for WWE ahead of the merger with UFC later this year under the Endeavor umbrella? Let me know your thoughts about that, as always, in the comment section below. Now, it was quite scary last night on SmackDown, wasn't it, regarding Rey Mysterio in his match against Santos Escobar. Now, the timeline of this is absolutely fascinating. So, the final match of WWE's United States Championship Invitational Tournament ended abruptly after Rey Mysterio suffered an apparent head injury on SmackDown last night on Fox. The match between Mysterio and Santos Escobar on Friday Night SmackDown appeared to be going as planned until Escobar connected with a tope suicida to Mysterio onto the floor. The show went to a commercial with no indication that anything out of the ordinary had happened. However, when SmackDown returned from the break, the match had been stopped and a ringside doctor was examining Mysterio. Replays showed the back of Mysterio's head uh, contacting the floor when he fell backwards from Escobar's suicide dive. The referee called off the match and Escobar was declared the winner. Mysterio was well enough to stand up and congratulate Escobar. Of course, Escobar's victory means he will be the next challenger for Austin Theory's United States Championship. Theory was in attendance for the match, munching on popcorn as he watched from a skybox high above the ringside area. Theory and Escobar went one-on-one -on -one in a non-title match just last week on SmackDown, with Escobar emerging victorious. But this is where it gets really strange, because the timeline about this afterwards, and trying to determine whether this was legitimate or just a storyline, gets really, really murky. So... Initially, following the publication of a lot of the stories online about this, Sean Ross Sapper Fightful claimed on Twitter that, quote, the Rey Mysterio injury is a storyline. But then, about an hour or so, an hour and a half later, Sapp deleted his tweet about Mysterio's injury being a storyline after claiming to have received, quote, conflicting information. Sapp later said on Fightful's post-show broadcast on their YouTube channel that he and some others were told immediately after the injury occurred that it was kayfabe, but a second source later said that it wasn't. 
Now, after all of this was going on and a lot of confusion regarding Mysterio's status was ongoing, he then posted a follow-up um, post onto Fight for Select, their Patreon service, be sure to check this out, saying, quote, Rey Mysterio sustained a legitimate injury on SmackDown. Fightful sources confirmed late Friday that Rey Mysterio's spot on SmackDown was not storyline as originally suspected. Fightful have learned that Santos Escobar was actually supposed to win the match clean and an audible was called and the match was ended. In addition, there was a backstage segment follow-up that was planned and had to be cancelled as well. Fightful wished him a speedy recovery. Now, he's not the first person to say this either. Wade Keller from the Pro Wrestling Torch, PW Torch, has also said the same thing, that Santos Escobar was supposed to win the match, but because of the injury, um, the audible was called. So, it looks like this was a legitimate injury. It's a serious injury. I think, I think Rey Mysterio is good enough to obviously get back to his feet and stuff like that, but what are your thoughts on that? How do you think WWE handled it? What are your thoughts on the reporting of it as well? And here's hoping Mysterio can be back in the ring fairly soon. Now, SmackDown last night saw Roman Reigns and Jey Uso go face-to-face -face as they get closer to tribal combat at SummerSlam. Last night on SmackDown, Roman Reigns and Jey Uso came face-to-face -face ahead of their battle at the biggest event of the summer. With Jey Uso opening the show, he barely got a greeting out to the New Orleans crowd before getting interrupted by the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Reigns demanded to know if Uso wants to be the face of the company now, be the tribal chief and take over his show, but Jey refuted his paranoia effectively. However, Reigns' power of projection kicked into high gear, accusing Jay of having turned against his twin brother to get where he was because he was selfish. Punctuated by the thought that even if the bloodline is over, he's still Roman Reigns, but who is Jay Uso? He continued to question Jay, wondering why he would even want to do this tribal combat match. Jay reminded Roman that he already beat him, he pinned him, and he was the only one to do it. At SummerSlam, Jay has vowed to do it again. Now, later in a backstage segment after Grayson Waller insulted Jay and got slapped, a match was made for later on in the evening. As Jay Uso took on Grayson Waller in the main event, Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, and Solo Sokoa came out to ringside to observe the match. Waller even dropped a mocking people's elbow on Jay in homage to his recent Twitter sparring partner, The Rock, during the match. By the end of the match, Waller would fall as a casualty of Uso, Jay using Roman's signature spear on on Waller to set up his big clash for the victory. However, the celebration would end up short-lived as Solo Sokoa first and then Roman Reigns attacked Jey Uso after the match. While Jey was able to land a spear on Roman, he would eventually be overcome by his brother and cousin as the remaining members of the Bloodline worked in tandem. Delivering not one, but two vicious spear and spike combinations, Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa certainly delivered their own vow of violence by the end of last night's episode. What did you think and what did you make of the latest chapter in the Bloodline saga last night on SmackDown and where where do you think this is going when it comes to the outcome of Tribal Combat at SummerSlam? LA Knight, as always, like he does every single week now, got probably one of, if not the biggest, pop of the evening. But this year's SummerSlam is going to feature a beefy, spicy new addition to WWE summertime tradition, as it will host the first ever SummerSlam Battle Royal presented by Slim Jim. On Friday Night SmackDown, LA Knight and former world champion Sheamus were announced as the first two entrants in the Battle Royal, with Knight visiting WWE official Adam Pearce backstage to demand entry into the melee. Pierce was seemingly pitching the match on the phone to unseen higher-ups before being interrupted by Knight and scheduled Knight for a match against Sheamus for next Friday SmackDown. The SummerSlam Battle Royal will feature a yet-to-be-specified number of Raw and SmackDown stars at the August 5th event at Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. There is no word on what the prize for the winner will be, if any. Knight himself has been something on something of a losing streak as of late, not winning a televised match since late June, despite the former Impact World Champion's popularity amongst WWE fans. However, that did change last night, where he won very quickly against members of the Hit Row. Now, let's talk about Ronda Rousey leaving a reality show that's about simulated Mars living. Yes, that's a real sentence. Mankind is a long way from making the barren desert wastelands of the planet Mars habitable, but to say nothing of the Australian outback. Such is the premise for Fox's Stars on Mars show, where a number of celebrities live together in a simulated Martian community in the Australian outback. 
According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, former WWE Women's Tag Team Champion Ronda Rousey left the show voluntarily as opposed to being voted out in the traditional means of elimination. Rousey missed her daughter too much, but despite her struggles, was said to never have been in any danger of being voted out as she'd been competent and diligent working alongside her fellow celebrities at the Space Commune. Rousey apparently scrapped often with NFL running, uh, running back turned actor Marshawn Lynch, with Rousey unable to get the former football star off his feet. Back in the world of pro wrestling, Rousey is currently embroiled in a feud with her former tag team partner and former best friend Shayna Baszler. Baszler's betrayal of Rousey cost the tandem the Women's Tag Team Championships at Money in the Bank earlier on this month. The feud between the longtime friends has been something they've desired to do in WWE for a long time, and Rousey reportedly has a, quote, hard out for her next hiatus from WWE, leading to the impromptu split in the middle of their Money in the Bank title defense. Rousey is rumored to be paying Baszler back with the rivalry as Baszler is the one who first introduced the former UFC champion to the world of professional wrestling. So apparently that's why Ronda Rousey was eliminated from this reality show. Now, I wanted to get your opinions on this because Conan, obviously well known for having strong opinions on a variety of different topics, but he's now spoken about Bray Wyatt. It's been over half a year since Bray Wyatt last wrestled on WWE television. The former Universal Champion remains not medically cleared to compete due to an undisclosed illness, which has cancelled plans or at least postponed them for a feud with Bobby Lashley that would have included Uncle Howdy, better known as Bo Dallas, and Alexa Bliss. Wyatt, of course, is an expensive superstar, and Keeping It 100 host Conan thinks that WWE might be burning money on the divisive talent. Quote, I'm a big Bray Wyatt fan, but he's too much trouble, Conan said. The AAA head booker believes that Wyatt's various issues, illnesses, injuries, which Conan seemed to believe are mental health related, again, we don't know, that must be stressed, which has not been confirmed, make him too unpredictable to rely on. Quotes, his matches aren't good, and as creative as he is, $3 million for what he's doing, Conan asked, yeah, get rid of him. Now, earlier this month, it was reported that Bray Wyatt is still dealing with his undisclosed medical issues. WWE has reportedly been hesitant to come up with plans for the popular star, as the process of getting him cleared has proven more complicated than initially hoped. Further changing plans and postponing plans and halting plans was the pregnancy of Alexa Bliss. WWE creative reportedly stopped coming up with pictures for her once it was apparent that her maternity would keep her out of the mix for a significant portion of the year. Bliss referred to the pregnancy as completely unexpected, showing off the best oops ever onesie for her future child with her husband, recording artist Ryan Cabrera. So, do you agree with Conan? Is Bray Wyatt more trouble than it's worth? Or, can WWE and Bray Wyatt get it together and still make considerable money and good television for the company moving forward? Let me know your thoughts about that. Finally, the Street Profits continue to tease a faction with Bobby Lashley, this week debuting a new look. On last night's episode of SmackDown, one star seemed set for a makeover after a backstage segment saw a new wardrobe delivered. After being spotted leaving a meeting with Bobby Lashley, the Street Profits were back in the locker room at SmackDown last night, sipping some red wine with him. While Lashley noted that it was important that they remember the Street Profits as stars, they should also look like stars, to which it seemed they were referring to Angelo Dawkins. Questioning why they didn't like uh, his, often designer and coordinated sweatsuits, Lashley said he did like them, however, it was just time for an upgrade. Then, enrolled a whole rack of suits, which Lashley informed the Profits were a gift to them from him. It remains to be seen if Bobby Lashley is forming a new faction after previously seeing the dissolution of the Hurt Business, a faction consisting of Lashley, MVP, Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin, or just recruiting the Profits in general. Elsewhere in potentially related news, Bianca Belair declined to tag team with Charlotte Flair on last night's SmackDown. However, Flair went around her to insist to Adam Pearce that they have a match with Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville after the champions were caught gossiping about them backstage. As Belair's backstage slights continue to mount, could she be in line to join the faction as well? She certainly has been displaying a sassier attitude as of late, certainly something to keep an eye on, particularly as she is the wife of Montez Ford too. So there you go, guys. It's the latest WWE news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.